Last question is, uh, AKA passed away last night. I'm sure as a party, it's something that you would like to speak to, the issue of uh, killings that we've been seeing, especially of artists, people that are responsible to give us hope and give us joy and bring us happiness. And here they've been killed. Uh, your message to the family? My First of all, I, I just want South Africa to know I'm angry. I'm angry for us uh, to really use such a uh, young talent uh, in, in this brutal manner. And I actually tweeted yesterday that I put uh, the entire blame at the door of, the, of this criminal enterprise called ANC. But let me, obviously, I'll, if you allow me, let me send my deepest condolences uh, to his family, his friends, uh, his supporters. It, uh, he's really been a, a patriot who really represented our, South, our country, South Africa, as a youth. And to be robbed of his talent at this uh, young age, it's unacceptable. Unfortunately, this has happened. We are going to ensure that uh, we remove this ANC so that we can bring back the rule of law in this country so that uh, our youth, our society, our elders can really live, know that they live in a country you were ready uh are you ready to join him obviously that you are here i think i'm i'm definitely i have a release in my spirit i've prayed about this i've thought about it thoroughly i think the current state of our country warrants um this move of mine and i'm just ready to serve so yes i'm i'm very much ready to join action is i appreciate the, the values the principles what they stand for the other day they just launched um Hashtag the, the South African dream and what what speaks to the South African dream speaks to where I see myself. All right, man, this is the Free Ride Podcast. We are broadcasting all the way here in El Dorado Park this morning. And of course, I've been invited to a historic day for a new party that has been launched quite recently. It's called Action SA. I'm here to cover and see what is going to happen today. In my background, and of course, on my left-hand side, there is Mr. Mashawa, as well as Darlene James, who is going to be a new member of the party. She's going to join the Party Action SA. And of course, what's interesting is that she has been an activist in Eldorado Park for many, many years. And of course, those of you who know her, is that she's been standing up for the issues of the community, especially around the issues of drugs and drug abuse in the area. She's been dealing with issues of uh, violence in Eldorado Park, the issues of gangsterism. So I'm about to speak to her in a short while and of course speak to Mr. Mashaba just to hear and understand Jorge, why did he decide that he would like to choose such an activist to join in his party Action SA. So we're at the church and I'll tell you all about it in a short while. So let's take a break and let's get him to finish his conversation and come and join us right here and have a conversation with us. Alright man, let's do that. Boom! Cool. Welcome back to it. This is the Free Ride Podcast. And of course, I'm standing with a man who has made so much history in South Africa, especially when it comes to business. Not only did he do all of that amazing work back in the 80s and early 90s, many of us know and remember the product called Black Like Me, Mr. Herman Mashaba. He's now turned a politician. He's a social activist, he helps people, and now he decided to fold his sleeves and get into the world of politics. I often wonder why he decided to do this. Mr. Mashaba, I salute you for doing what you have done. Why did you decide to join politics? Well, I, honestly, it, I don't know. I wish I could really explain uh, because it's a job that really punishes me. It's a job that I hate, but it's a job that uh, I feel... Uh, privileged South Africans like myself we we don't play that role then this country is going to uh, sink because we uh, right now in South Africa I feel like I'm in a sinking ship and um, I've really been taught and taught by my grandfather throughout my life that whatever I do in life please uh, try 
to save the situation. Yeah. Don't really look at uh, problems as problems. Look the, at them as challenges. As a God-given uh, human being, God gave you the brains, this little brain to use to navigate your environment. And the reason why in 2016 I decided to leave business because at the time I felt the country was in trouble. And I, honestly, I was already sick and tired of being at the dinner parties, uh, meeting with people. We are always complaining. Yeah. And that's not how you solve the country's problem. The country's problems, more especially when you live in a democratic environment, is to actually participate in, 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 in the environment. And that's the reason I've decided at a huge cost to my personal life, at a huge cost to my to my family. I've been in a month on the third of March I'll be married to forty one years with my wife. And I look and I look at uh, the amount of time that I spend away from home, getting the youth uh, of South Africa to wake up to say, please, let us not let South Africa collapse like all the African countries. While we, our constitution is still in place, please, let's not change uh, the political uh, trajectory of our country by banning our schools, our clinics, and so forth. Let's uh, change the course of our history by voting politicians out who actually fail to del uh, deliver uh, to our expectations. Mm. How different is your party? I mean, we've got more than probably 40 parties. If you look at the ballot box, come every elections. What makes you stand out as Action SA uh, to the rest of the organizations that have been formed in the last 10, 15 years? Well, look... Uh, one thing that we must accept in South Africa, so you know, democracy is still really very relatively new in uh, for us as black people in particular. We only started enjoying democracy uh, 29 years ago uh, with a lot of our people with no education at the time. But it's actually quite sad that uh, the current NC government has actually failed uh, to provide people with education, Western apartheid government did. And uh, when you have uh, a, a social Society that is not educated, they don't really see the value of, um, of 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 democracy. They don't see the power, the power within themselves. Because you can imagine, if all of us uh, the, uh, in South Africa can take. Um, democracy seriously, take our votes to understand the power of that vote, that we can actually change uh, the, 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 the world. And that's what Action SA is all about. we getting the youth in particular, black youth, we are the ones who are going to change the trajectory of this country. You look at how many whites are there, even if they vote for one party, they, there's no way that they can make an impact. But us as black people, we are the ones who are going to decide whether South Africa um, Succeed, or we're going to decide whether South Africa fails. And uh, we have still believe that South Africa can be saved and fixed, uh, but it can be fixed by the youth. And I'm going all out uh, to make sure that we do a lot of voter education for, for the youth of this country to really understand the power. And one thing that uh, I want the youth of South Africa to understand. Let us first be South Africans before we can be anything else. We can be black or white or whatever, even gender. If we can really love our country as South Africans, let us not allow politicians to divide us along racial lines. Remember, we fought uh, this evil system of apartheid because it was uh, dividing us. True. But what is really said for me, 28 years, uh, 29 years later, we are div more divided uh, than anywhere else. You can imagine that uh, 29 years I come into El Dorado Park is still regarded as a colored uh, community. Mm. I've got family here, blood family, it's to be elders or whatever. How do you, do you separate me from my own family? True. You know, I don't want to really be separated from, from wise. I want them to really know that we are all South Africans. Yes, God made us um, in his own image. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Let us learn to really coexist. And that's really what uh, Action SA is trying to do. I'm not going to let anyone divide us along racial uh, lines, and I keep quiet about it. Mm. Uh, just quickly, I know we, it looks like your team wants us uh, to go inside. Uh, I just want to check, uh, you are here in Eldos today. It's uh, an important day for you. 
uh, why are you here today? We'll broadcast this tomorrow, so don't worry, we're not going to break the news before they actually happen. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here invited uh, by the church. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I was saying to Derelyn James earlier on, uh, you know, Derelyn, I've always known it, admired her at a distance. And uh, sometime last year, I had discussions with her, a frank discussion, and I said, Derelyn, when you're ready, you, you've got to take your time. I'm a strong believer in, in, in uh, the synchronicity and God. Yeah. You know, I did not at any point in time want to really push it. I was really surprised late last year uh, when Derelyn phoned me, says, Herman, I'm ready now to join Action SA. I've realized that you're the party that resonates uh, with what I wish uh, for for the country. But I want to really do it in a church environment. Mm -hmm. So that, for me, it's it's what I've I've been praying that uh, God will decide. And now here is it. She wants to uh, announce her being uh, the actioners, uh, an actioner and doing in a church environment. But what is actually more important, what I'm going to be sharing with uh, with the residents of El Dorado Park, uh, why uh, I come in personally to to uh, to welcome uh, uh, Derelyn as an actioner. This community has been faced with massive challenges. So I want Derelyn to really uh, work with me to go, the both of us and others, we go to national government because problems of El Dorado Park are not going to be solved at, uh, pro- city at a city level. Or provincial you, you, level. At provincial yeah. level. Mm-hmm. Problems of El Dorado Park are going to be sorted out at national level where we pass policy. So I don't want people to think that uh, I, I want Darlene to be a councillor or whatever. I want Darlene because I'm going to Parliament and I want her to join me in Parliament where we're going to change policy yeah. so that people of El Dorado Park, 30 years down the line, they must feel that they're part of, they're not the forgotten people because mm-hmm. I have a sense the people of El Dorado Park are not forgotten people by this uh, current government. Absolutely. Uh, my last question to you, your take on the president, he delivered his sonar on Thursday. There was a lot of disruptions, a lot of things happened in parliament. Uh, what's your take from uh, the sonar? Really, very disappointing. Look, I personally did not really expect anything from Sir Ramaphosa. He spoke when he took over of nine ways that, uh, yes, uh, here we've got uh, seven Disasters, yes. Yeah. Uh, seven disasters, yes. Uh, a Under man, and, and, and yeah, no, absolutely. I feel uh, he's the worst president uh, uh, in the in the last four hundred years uh, of, of 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 South Africa. We we you know we 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 went during t- uh, Zuma's days. We never thought things can really get so bad. But look at um, under Cyril Ramaphosa, the criminal justice system. Eighty people are being killed in South Africa. We are known as the meta capital of the world. We are we are known worldwide to have the uh, the highest sustainable uh, unemployment rate uh, uh, in the world. The youth being the most affected. Our schools are, are dysfunctional. Corruption is at all time high. So you know. T- now he wants to uh, come out with the Minister of Electricity. When he, we've got two departments already that are responsible for, for electricity, uh, enter, uh, Department of uh, uh, Public Enterprise and uh, the Weatherman Tasha World. Now why do we need another another, another ministry? So I'm sure to, uh, we must not be surprised and next day is going to tell us about or uh, soon is going to tell us uh, uh, of Minister of Potholes, <laughs> minister, of, <laughs> minister of Corruption. In fact, uh, Sir Ramaphosa should really be focusing on reducing uh, his, cabinet. his cabinet. Now he's adding. He's and, 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 but what is even more worrying is consolidating everything in, into his office. We are seeing a Mugabe type of uh, a leader here who's consolidating everything in, in his power. Central, yeah. centralizing power. Mm-hmm. One thing that I want Sir Ramaphosa to know, this uh, South Africa, it's not going to be follow the Zimbabwean uh, uh, trend. We are going to stand up. We are going to campaign. We are going to conscientize South Africans to really be aware that come 2024, we must remove ANC out of power. Uh, we heard uh, last question is uh, AKA passed away last night. I'm sure as a party, it's something that you would like to speak to the issue of uh, killings that we've been seeing, especially of artists, people that are responsible 
to give us hope and give us joy and bring us happiness. And here they've been killed. Uh, your message to the family? My first of all, I, I just want South Africa to know I'm angry. I'm angry for us uh, to really use such a uh, young talent. Uh, in, in this brutal manner and I actually tweeted yesterday that I put uh, the entire blame at the door of the of this criminal enterprise called ANC but let me obviously I'll, if you allow me let me send my deepest condolences uh, to his family his friends uh, his supporters it, uh, he's really been a, a patriot who really represented our South, our country, South Africa, as a youth. And to be robbed of his talent at this uh, young age, it's unacceptable. Unfortunately, this has happened. We are going to ensure that uh, we remove this ANC so that we can bring back the rule of law in this country so that uh, our youth, our society, our elders can really live, know that they live in a country where their lives are protected. Mr. Mashaba, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you once again. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I love your enthusiasm and your, uh, your patriotism that you have for this country because you don't have to do it. And people who are fortunate like yourselves, they would rather step away from the issues of politics and activism, but you decided to fold your sleeves. So I applaud you. And I respect you for that. And I really thank you for doing what you are doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we are out with Mr. Mashawa. Check it out. I'll be speaking to Terli James in a few minutes. All right, thank you. Cheers. Boom. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, and welcome back to it. This is a free ride podcast. A historic moment here in El Dorado Park. El Dorado Park's finest young lady, if I oh, may say you. so myself. <laughs> <laughs> she is now going into a different political environment. And of course, uh, well done and congratulations, my friend, Darlene James. You. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm a bit anxious, a bit nervous. This yeah. is a new a new level, you know, from an activist to a politician. Can I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I'm ready for it. I'm yeah. ready for it. You look beautiful. I mean, always. I mean, like, but I love the green and the red. Thank you so much. Yes, it speaks to flames that are about to come. Yes, yeah. and changes that are about to be made. I'm really excited. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I spoke to Mr. Mashaba earlier on. He told me that uh, he had been chatting to you, trying to get you to join his party. And uh, about late last year, you guys had a conversation, told him that you were ready. Uh, are you ready to join him? Obviously that you are here. I think I'm, I'm definitely, I have a release in my spirit. I've prayed about this. I've thought about it thoroughly. I think the current state of our country warrants um, this move of mine, and I'm just ready to serve. So, yes, I'm, I'm very much ready to join Action ESA. I appreciate the, the values, the principles, what they stand for. The other day they just launched um, hashtag the, the South African dream and what what speaks to the South African dream speaks to where I see myself. And I think they had seven values up there and seven priorities and the one that stood out for me was social justice and that's where I see myself. You know, it's time that we, we elevate our people. It's time that we deal with issues, all the social is issues in our communities. And I think this is why I feel quite comfortable with this decision. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, you've been uh, an activist in El Dorado Park, dealt with so many issues, drug abuse. But late, recently, the issues of uh, gang violence has just been spiraling out of control. What sort of support or lack of support have you received or not received from either the city, the province, and national government? Um, I, th I think the problem that we have in government, in all three spheres of government, is the fact that there's no synergy. Departments work in silos. And for as long as we address crime without addressing it, with social development being present, with Department of Justice being present, with health and all of those sectors, because they all have a role to play, we're not going to go anywhere. So it's been a tough fight in getting the leaders to realize that there needs to be synergy between departments. Um, the killings on the streets of El Dorado Park continue and we continue to fight. Mm, absolutely. Uh, just lastly, your message to the people of Elders. I'm sure they're going to be shocked uh, and surprised, but they have seen you wearing a cap. Yes, no, this week. <laughs> so this week I was feeling brave <laughs> uh, and I was wearing my Action SA cap. Um, 
um, out there in the community. So I think everyone knows, but they're not sure what this announcement is all about. Okay. It's an official announcement that I'm officially joining Action SA. And who knows what else the President Herman has up his sleeve. We'll wait and see. So, yeah. Thank you. Your message quickly to oh, the young my people. Message, yeah. My message to the young people, it's time to make your voices heard. Remember, um, you are very important and the role you play in this country. We cannot be silent about issues that affect us. The state of this country warrants everyone to become part of the solution. You know, I was speaking to some youngsters and to some people that were saying, I am apolitical. The fact that we have load shedding, we can no longer be apolitical. We need to make our crosses in come 2024 and we need to become active citizens in South Africa. Play your part. You are needed irrespective of the space you find yourself in. Everyone has a role to play. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you. All right, my friend. Thank awesome. You. So Thank proud you so of you, man. Thank you. All right, we're going to go inside the church and uh, see the proceedings and uh, wait for the announcement to happen, and then uh, we'll be out. All right, man. This is a free ride podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Boom.
in our community. Listen, elders has not been forgotten. Elders is only rising to the occasion. We might have a tax, but that's not going to derail us. We are moving forward. So I want the Rabbit Park to put the hands together. We have a phenomenal man in the house. The president of Action SA, Man Arthur. And the president, Herman Mashaba. I think you can give it up to me. What a man. What a man that makes an impact. What a man that doesn't say no. What a man that believes in the church. Oh, come on, you gotta put your hands together. It's not the man that believes in other stuff. The man believes in the church. And that's what she wants. And that's what we've been praying for. You know what? The word of God is very clear. It's God that pulls out prisoners. But it's the same God that brings them down. If you don't recognize God, you are in trouble. So there was a prophecy in this church. And this prophecy was a couple of weeks ago that the Lord gave that lead. And I don't know why I gave her the prophecy because I didn't know anything. And I said to her, the Lord is changing your direction. And the Lord is going to place you on high. And the Lord is going to set your foot on higher ground. And I wasn't sure what God was telling me. And the Lord said it's coming with speed and with favor and with supernatural growth. And I came to announce here today. That's why we have the president of Action SA here with Dr. Mission. The professor. I love this man. I love this man. This man is such a great man in our community. I want to thank you. I want to honor you and all the other guys, the counselors that's here with our president, Urban Mashaba. We're going to put our hands together for the kick in the body of Christ. For man that's about to make some waves. A man that's in the change direction. I'm giving over now to none other than the great honorable, the great president of Action SA to come and make a major announcement. None other than our own Urban Bashama. Put your hands together in your hand and keep our place. Father to be on his way. 
and I meant so much to him and instilled certain values to me that made the man that's standing in front of you today. My grandfather instilled in me that whatever I do, I must take personal responsibility. My grandfather made sure and instilled in me that I must never fail in life. He said to me, my boy, you're lucky you're a human being. Use this little brain as you meet challenges in life. Use this little brain that God has given you to navigate your challenges. And that's how I've developed to be the man who's standing in front of you today. Because at the age of 22, I decided I must change the course of my during the dark days of this country's history. At the time when Angel Fairwood said to me, you're a black man who can't wait to business. And then I said, Mr. Fairwood, uh, uh, P.W. Porter, I said, Mr. P.W. Porter, with all the powers restored to you by the Constitution of the your republic, you can control everyone else except him and Masha. Third of March, 1982, because I realized my success is dependent on my stability. I needed someone who can protect me from myself. Third of March, 1982, I got married to my beautiful wife. In a few weeks' time, I'll be married to her for 41 years. <laughs> and um, I look at it, I look at my life. My wife deserves the biggest honor because she protected me from myself. You know, I believe in what is called synchronicity, and I believe for. Um, in God giving me guidance every morning when I wake up, every night when I go to bed, I always ask for God to give me the wisdom for me to make the right decisions in my life. Make it happen. Terrilyn, I'm deeply honored to really get this opportunity to work with you. I'm sure and I believe it was not an easy decision. Unfortunately, it's a necessary one. God was not going to allow you to sit back and see your community disintegrate. We are going to solve. We are going to save this country. We are going to fix this country, whether anyone else likes it or not. The problem we are facing, the problem we are facing, it's a temporary problem. And I don't take it for granted. It is for that reason I'm angry. I always tell uh, communities um, that, you know, my wife from time to time when I'm on national television or I do interviews, but this is, uh, I think, why do you look so angry? Uh, and I said to my wife, tell me, why do you think uh, I'm looking, I'm not just looking angry, I'm an angry South African. I feel betrayed by this government. I live like I'm out of the land in the I thought we were going to see an explosion, an integration of our country. Now we've got a government that is, uh, that is divided among racial lines. I'm angry. We have the highest unemployment rate in the world. Look at what happened to this young artist, the AK, yesterday. May he so rest in peace. Condolences to his family. Totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. How can anyone expect me not to be angry? We opened our borders 
for international criminal syndicate bring drugs into our community to destroy us. How can you remember? How can anyone expect you not to be angry? How can anyone expect you not to be angry? I can tell you, I'm working very hard. I'm using my privileged position. There are many now who are going to come to the parliament. And actually, they say it's going to emerge. It's going to shock South Africa. And one thing I want to unapologetically tell you, and I hope well, that all the actioners are going to really support one another. Yes. I want to bring back the death penalty. Yes. No ways no I want to give uh, someone who kills not only our youth, they kill our families. Yeah. When, they a, when they have a drug addict in the house, it's not just your, your, your daughter or your, your son who gets affected. The entire community, someone who kills the community, and expect me, I must give them a second chance. No, I must, I must Someone who must just wait and kill a kid like they did yesterday. We catch you. You expect me. I must give them a second chance. No ways. This country, 29 million of our people, of which the president celebrates, it's a disgrace. We live on social grounds. I don't want to live in a society like this. For me to support criminals in jail, I want this money to be used. We must build ECD centers. All our schools. And those I want to see a child being brought up here in, in El Dorado Park. I want to see a child being brought in, so up in Soweto. I want to see a child being brought up in Central where I live. Public schools must be the same. I want God to come back into our schools. When I started school in 1966, Sub-day, I started sub in 1966 until I left Metric um, and went to university. Every morning, we used to go to assembly. And uh, we asked for God's blessings. And this evil government came and took God away from us. We are going to bring God back into our Pastors, Constance, and your wife, thank you so much. Very I don't know if you'd like to really stand up and say something to your community. Because this is your community. I don't think, I don't believe there's no one in this community, if not South Africa does not know this woman's commitment to social justice. Now, she's now taking a step. Come 2024, she's going to be national governor. We make sure that it's 20 years down the line. It must be a totally different community. Totally different community. A community that's going to have pride, a community that's going to be safe, a community that's going to be prosperous. The children of the Emperor it's going to be your responsibility to change their lives. Thank you so much for accepting this responsibility.
thing that I say, you know what? It always seems impossible until it's done. And many years ago when I started on this journey, I did not know where it would end or how it would end. And a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure when I'm going to actually author this book and publish it, but I started writing a book without a title because I believe that in our communities and in our country, we have so many possible change makers that is filling the seats here this morning who think that they need titles, who think and assume that they need to step up from a space of privilegeness. But all we need to change this country is will, determination and passion. I'm not sure how the title of politician <laughs> Because you know there's such a negative, there's so much negativity when it comes when people say you're a politician. But I don't think I'm going to be a politician. I'm simply going to be someone. I'm simply going to be someone who's going to continue speaking my truth and remaining my authentic self. And by that I mean caring for the next person and fulfilling my God-given purpose, which is to serve the country of South Africa. I want to thank Mr. Herman Mashaba for, for believing in me, for recognizing me. I want to thank you this week. You, you spoke about the dream, the South African dream. And I looked at the priorities that you are focusing on. And I thought to myself, in order for me to align with this party, needs to speak to who I am, it needs to project my values. I am not going to align myself to something that doesn't fit and doesn't sit well with me. And I, as I was going through, I think there's seven of them, and I saw social justice. And I thought, you know what, thank you, Lord, that is my release. I want to encourage everyone seated here today, wherever you are, just be the light in the little corner that you find yourself. Wherever you are, you don't have to know the know-how. You don't have to have the resources. Continue making a difference. Irrespective of the attacks, in all the spaces we find, there's always attacks. It comes with the territory. Use those attacks to polish yourself, to get yourself to the next level. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I've always stood up with scripture. I know the plans that he has for me, and I'm unapologetic about it. I've become bold in my world. I am no longer that. I actually want Caleb to stand. The very thing that I thought would destroy me, God has used it for good. Many years ago, you were seated in a crowd in an audience in 2030, and I projected so much shame on you, and I told the world about what you were doing wrong, and I spoke, and I said about how broken our family was, and it's almost 10 years later, my child, today you are standing, and I'm not standing in a different space, I'm not shame. I just felt that it's important for me to do because this is how the journey started. Back then I shamed you and I exposed what you were going through and you were known as a drug addict. And today in a public platform with the President of Action SA and our future President of this country, a new President, I want to thank you for the battle that God has given us. He has used that battle for us to effect change in this country. As I'm going to walk in this new era, this new space, this new journey, you're going to walk alongside me. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for trying. I know it's not easy. I know it's, it's very hard. I know you face many challenges every day. I know things aren't always rosy between the two of us. But keep on keeping on. 
You are the reason why I'm standing here today because I love you. I acknowledge you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. I'm not sure where Kelly is. Where is she now? Oh, she's over there. Thank you so much, my daughter. I think it's important for me to recognize my family because everything that you do starts with family. It starts with God and it starts with family. Thank you, my child, for being my pillar, my support. That is such an amazing, strong young lady that is seated there. I love you and I appreciate you. And I know that you're going to be there for me every step of the way. Thank you so much. To my mother. Many the times when I said, Mom, it's too difficult. People attack you. It's not easy, this journey. You were the one who said, We are really. Many a times when we didn't know what we are having to eat, when we didn't know when the next loaf of bread was coming from, when I left my job and I didn't know how I was going to provide for my entire family. And I only had a picture to provide for us who were there for me. You look after me and all my children. It is my time now to look after you. Thank you so much. To my spiritual parents, Ian and Zika. This is the place I start my journey on every level. Whether I buy something, whether I do something, I, I come and I consult here. For God is in the driver's seat. Thank you so much for being my guidance. Thank you so much for supporting me unapologetically. I was worried about today. But thank you so much for always being in my corner. I love and appreciate you so much. To Mr. Mashaba, I hope and pray that I'm able to make you proud. Thank you so much. I do not take this lightly. I appreciate this opportunity to affect change from a national level. I appreciate, I think over the years, this is the reason why I've been up and down in the community with my fellow activists, Cheryl, and everybody. I want you guys to stand for I am who I am, not because of me, but because of the people that I surround myself with. And people like Cheryl Pillay and the team that is seated here today. We stem from various political parties, various religious backgrounds. But what stands out for me about this team is the level of tolerance and respect we have for one another. And when we have tolerance and respect, we can go a lot further because there's accountability. Thank you so much to the team. I thought I didn't have anything to say. To my friends, thank you for being here today. I appreciate everyone to the community of El Dorado Park and I think the pioneer stories were just hanging there. God's got a plan for us. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feet as we forget. All right, man. So we just finished, uh, just got back. Uh, of course, uh, today was a very special day. Uh, I was invited as a free ride podcast to go and uh, uh, witness Derlene James uh, joining Action SA. And of course, uh, it's one of those historic moves uh, for the party itself. 
and of course seeking to garner support from coloured voters and of course uh, focusing on townships such as El Dorado Park and of course this is where Derlene James has a lot of influence and of course uh, many of you might have seen her in the news, in the media constantly pushing the issues that affect her community of El Dorado Park and of course uh, we've seen her standing up against uh, uh, like I said earlier on, the issues of drug abuse that are affecting El Dorado Park. And of course, um, El Dorado Park community feels like a community that has been left behind. They feel like a forgotten community. And of course, not just El Dorado Park. If you look at the majority of the colored communities, such as Riverley, Westbury, Nuclear, Bosmont, um, El Dorado Park, and um, in, in Rodeport area, you've got Davidsonville. And of course, if you go further uh, to the East Rand, there's a few other colored townships that feel that uh, they have been forgotten. And of course, uh, and I guess this is the direction that the party itself wants to start getting a lot of support. And uh, of course, uh, I spoke to Mr. Herman Mashaba, you saw earlier on. And of course, uh, also, uh, you've just watched the whole proceedings in the church taking place and uh, where J- Darlene James joined um, officially Action SA. So we wish her all the best. Uh, we wish the party all the best. And of course, uh, uh, you know, this is how democracy works. Uh, democracy in South Africa means that anybody can join and belong to any political party of their choice. And of course, you know, you have to look at yourself and say, what are the values? Which party speaks to my values, my principles? Which party actually has a messaging that is dedicated to me as an individual? And uh, do they have policies that actually speak to the issues that affect you or your community? And of course, that's the choice you have. And of course, that's the democracy uh, that was hard fought for. So uh, later on, um, I will be going uh, to another event, and uh, this event uh, is organized by another church. Uh, it's called the Bread of Life uh, in Zola, in Soweto. So uh, as soon as I'm done here, at about uh, 1 o'clock, I'll be heading off to go and join them. So at the next episode of the Free Ride podcast, it'll be purely focused on uh, uh, my talk uh, and as well as uh, our partner, C.O.E.C. Le Injala, Greg and uh, his wife uh, have teamed up to form a amazing project that they're doing in Kosoweto. I'm sure you've seen some of the episodes um, where I've interviewed Greg and his wife. And of course, um, you know, they're doing a wonderful project in Soweto at Faranani Primary School where they've got this organization called Sioisile Injala. And uh, yeah, I'll be... Uh, joining them and uh, check out that podcast. So for now, I'm out and uh, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe to this channel and tell all your friends about it. And of course, this has been the Free Ride Podcast. Um, I'm out. Boom! Oh.